Welcome back to Godless Reads, the chilling tales for Dark Knight show, where different godless authors read their own work. I'm the super annoying Drew Stepik, owner of Godless.com and the Godless app, and I'm also a horror writer myself. You wouldn't know that because I'm an annoying 90s car salesman who just fucks around and hangs out in alleys. On this week's episode, from Tasmania, the Tasmanian devil himself, Simon McCarty reads his own story, Perceptual Disturbances. For those of you not familiar with McCarty, he made a big splash in indie horror in 2020, 2021, when his book, Mother Maggot, was censored from every single distribution platform. He was deplatformed universal. Mother Maggot was banned for a reason, you guys. It is seriously depraved, sickening, and it will really gross you out. I have to warn you guys, this is the farthest thing from mainstream horror that you've ever heard. I'm going to enforce this. It is very, very, very disturbing and very, very gross. So if you thought Jonathan Butcher's Chocolate Man was gross and disturbing, you ain't heard nothing yet. I don't normally do trigger warnings, but yeah, you've been warned. So kick back, grab your drug of choice, grab a fucking barf bag, and let Simon McCarty show you how disgusting he can be with perceptual disturbances. The sun shines through the window and illuminates the dust motes spiralling above a sea of garbage and mounds of dirty clothes strewn over the bedroom floor. The blanket I pinned up to cover the window must have fallen down in the night. I never noticed because I was too busy working on my piece de la resistance in my book of dirty poetry that I'm going to publish. I read aloud one more time and giggle at my comical genius. There was once a woman from Nantucket who said of her husband's ass, I'll fuck it. She grabbed her favourite dildo and into his tight ass to burrow until she was stopped by a shit nugget. The page is the notepad rustle. It's hilarious. Dirty notepad says dryly. My heart sinks. The voices are back. In my creative fervor, I neglected to pick up my prescription, and now I'm a few days behind with my medication. The doctors say I'm schizophrenic and have perceptual disturbances. Certain objects talk to me. Usually they are friendly, but sometimes they ask me to do horrible things. My self-esteem is really low, and I do what they tell me to do because I become anxious if somebody's displeased with me. They make threats against my mother too if I don't obey them. I need to get into town right now and have my prescription filled. The medication makes them go away. Do you really think it's funny? No. Did you know what it was? I shake my head. Remember that time you saw that video on Best Call? Of that man running a piece of crisp white paper across his dick hole? Dirty notepad says. How could I forget? Every time I think about it, I cross my legs and squirm. I want you to run my razor-sharp edges between your cock lips. Fuck no. My cock reacts to the thought and my eyes bug out. Don't be a pussy. It'll be hilarious. Not for me, it won't. It may be one of the most painful things I could do to myself. Of course, if you took chicken, your mother could always take your place. My mother doesn't have a dick. What would they do to her? I don't want anything happening to my mummy. I've put her through enough shit in this lifetime. No, I'll do it, I blurt out. I pick up dirty notepad and peeling back my fossil to display a ring of yellowing smegma, I place a sheet of paper between my dick. My cock looks like a toothless snake clasping a thin wafer biscuit in its mouth. That's it, big boy. Now as fast as you can, rip it across your pee hole. I suck in a mouthful of air, violently jerk the piece of paper and widen my dick by half an inch. It stings a hundred times more than the urinary tract infection I caught when the dead kangaroo forced me to stop the car and now it's not ring like off. That's my man. Excellent work. I've gone to the kitchen and squirt some lemon juice on it. We don't want you catching a nasty infection, do we? I throw out some soiled clothes. It's been weeks since I did the laundry, and the brown concrete in my underwear chased my ass crack as I shuffle into the kitchen. I rummage in the fridge and unearth the green lemon I picked up in my walk last week. It was ripening, ready for my gin and tonic. I don't want to risk looking for a knife and use my hands to tear the lemon apart. I reach into my pants, grasp my knob in my fist, and squeeze the segment of lemon to my gaping pee hole. Fuck! I howl. The juice stings and tears square from my eyes. I half hobble and half run to the sink and thrust my knob under the faucet. The cold water numbs the burning agony and I sigh deeply with relief. I'm blinking away the tears when my guard drops and the stovetop appears in my vision. 
Two elements turn on and glow like fiery eyes. Stovey and I are old friends, as the burns will have my body testify. Glad you're up, Matt. Thought we could play a little game. I feel like screaming. I don't like Stovey's game. I'm in a hurry, Stovey. I need to go into town and get my medication. Surely you're not in so much of a hurry that you can't spend a little time with your oldest pal. He makes me feel guilty. No, of course not. I tremble uncontrollably. You're not scared, are you, Matt? Stovey's eyes flicker. You always hurt me. Last month you asked me to put my tongue on the element for five seconds. Several layers of skin were left behind when I pulled it off. My tongue swelled to the size of a hot dog bun. I had to rush off to the hospital. That was fun. Today we're going to play much more gently, I promise. I release my pent-up breath. We could always make toffee, I say and smile weakly. Maybe some other time. It would be more fun, though, if you sit on my elements and spread your ass apart, wouldn't it? My sphincter tightens at the thought. Oh God, no. That's not playing gently. Please don't make me. It'll be fun. Cooking my anus on the stove will be fun. I pace up and down the kitchen. I can't believe the crap these voices come up with. If you want us to continue to be friends, you'll do it. And of course, there's always the matter of your mother. We don't want to involve her, do we? Okay, okay. But only for a moment, though. I don't want to go to hospital again. They think I'm self-harming. Be as fast as you want. But you have to recite a poem for me. Stovey must be clabbering with dirty notepad. Peer down at Stovey's malevolent burning eyes. They are so hot my face flushes and sweat beads on my forehead. I can do this. I've had demon hot thin to lose before. It can't be much worse than that. I drop my pants and my cock dribbles a droplet of blood on the floor. Maybe it won't be as bad if I piss on my ass first. I cut my hands, urinate into them and splash the piss all over my cheeks until my hole is good and wet. Fuck! It stings so much. On three, I say to myself, Stovey turns himself up to high and his eyes burn like flaming meteorites. One, two, three. I launch myself through the air with my ass cheeks parted, my ass heading for destination fried arsehole. Stovey, Stovey, brand me with your fire. Stovey, Stovey, turn the heat up higher. I chant as I'm airborne. My arsehole slaps onto the elements with a sizzle and so do my balls. I have to stop myself jumping six feet in the air because the pain is so intense. The reek of burnt bum hole and singed pubic hair fills my nostrils. I spit the stench from my mouth and scream. That's a boy, now grind that ass. I squirm in my pink tunnel while I rasp out the last lines of the lyric. Stovey, Stovey, I've spread my ass cheeks wide. Stovey, Stovey, fuck my asshole's getting fried. I thrust myself forward and my ass cheeks spread apart, but my flesh is fused to the glowing iron. I grip my teeth and use my feet to push off from the cupboard door beneath me. There is a sound like ripping linen and searing pain lances through my body. My breath snags in my throat, then whooshes out in a piercing scream. Ha ah, ha, that was brilliant, Stovey says. You fucker, I scream with my head between my legs and expecting my undercarriage. There's a black and rectangle of cracked flesh that encompasses my balls, arsehole on the back of my thighs. Oh my god, I cry and stagger to the shower. Don't be a stranger, Stovey calls out. I purposely don't keep any rays in the shower opting instead to grow a long beard, which I chew on to keep trimmed. I throw off my shirt, turn the cold tap full on, and spray my burning nethers. Oh god, that feels so much better. But I still have to go to the hospital at some stage. Fucking life. I need to sort myself out. My priority now has to be to collect my meds, so I turn off the shower and gently pat myself dry before I slip back into my dirty clothes. I rush from the bathroom, eager to get out of the house before I'm waylaid again. Out of the corner of my eye, I glimpse the knife. Hey, one minute. Knife calls out to me. Put my head down, pretending I've not heard, and fumble with the door handle, desperate to escape. I thought we were friends. Friends? I exclaim, my mouth wide open in surprise. Last time you made me s- Foul lack me. That was fun. I thought we might pry off one of your fingernails today. A fingernail? I whimper. The thought of doing things to my fingernails makes me feel faint. Push me under the nail and flip it up. You'll barely feel a thing. Okay, I sigh. This has to be the last thing. Then I'll be on my way to the chemist to get my medication. These voices will soon be gone. I grab the knife and insert it under the nail of my index finger until it pokes out above the nail. My nerve endings go crazy and burning pains blaze up my arm. I pry the blade up and watch the nail rise. The skin still clings to it as it pulls slowly away. The blood red tip is exposed, soft and vulnerable. I can't take it anymore. I fling the knife down, burst out of the front door and run straight at the gate. Wait, we haven't finished playing. I'm bored. I run down a path next to my house, lined by an overgrown hedge to the park. The warm breeze plays with my hair and softly strokes my skin. Ah, I take a deep breath and feel better already. An enormous weight is lifted off my chest despite the agony I'm in. 
I should be safe now. The voice is seldom calm when I'm out and about. There's not a cloud in the sky, the birds are singing, and the scent of jasmine and sunset comes in the air. The wreck is coming from a stretched out condom lying in the middle of the path. It's overflowing with jizz and ants that are gathered around the edges, sipping the curdling cream as if it's the nectar of the gods. Good morning, lovely day, isn't it? I look up, there's not a soul around. Nah, down here, the condom. Calm bubbles out one end of the rubber as he speaks. Disgusting, I murmur quickly on my nose. That's fucking polite, isn't it? It's not like that. I wasn't expecting anybody. That's all, I lie. Uh Uh-huh, I don't believe you. Sorry, man, I didn't mean to offend you. I shuffle closer. My inners object to being such close proximity to the calm and I gag. I'm fucked up, dude. Some guy with an enormous cock stressed the fuck out of me. And then stuff must have seen them shake you at hemorrhoids. I peer closer. It's such a hot day. There's a mess bubbling on the asphalt. Oh, yeah. I see little bits of shit and blood all over you. Now you mention it. Fucking gross. Help a brother out, would you? Here we go again. Clean me up. Make me new again. Then maybe I can go inside some silk malt party next time instead of it. The condom does a little jiggle, disturbing the sperm and enveloping several ants in the lake of jizz. They flounder around helplessly. Hell of a way to go, I say. What? The condom growls. The ants, drowning in my... I say, pointing at them. Fuck them. They would have taken all day to clean me up. Now stop pissing around and freshen me up. Name's Reggie, by the way. Matt. I search for a suitable twig, insert one end in the rim of the condom, and lift it up. What the fuck do you think you're doing, kumquat? I'm going to take you to a public bathroom and wash you. The bluebottle fly lands on Reggie and feeds on a smear of shit. I don't think so, man. I want to use your tongue. My what? I heard him. I just don't believe he'd suggest such a thing. You heard me. I was like, my public bathroom's unhygienic. I'm not going to risk my health in one of them. I want you to suck the spunk out of me like it's a cream from a donut. I want to be shiny in you again. Oh, God, you've got to be shitting me. Some guy walks past and gives me a wide berth. I can't blame him. I suppose I do look a bit crazy right now. Do it now and don't waste a drop. Reggie roars. OK, OK, just don't yell. I don't like when people get mad at me. I grab Reggie by the rim and hold the warm, sticky rubber to my lips. The smell of rancid sour spunk sears my nostrils and bile bubbles up from my stomach. I want to get this over and done with quickly. I tongue Reggie, scooping up all the warm cream coating his insides. There's at least a mouthful. Don't forget to chew your food before you swallow, Reggie says helpfully. Oh God, this gets worse, I chew. What did my old mum used to say to me? Always chew your food 40 times. The sun sound comes squelches between my teeth and coats the top of my mouth. 39, 40, I swallow. Cumble slides down my gullet like a raw oyster. Nice, now lick that shit and blood off. Let us in the moment I see it looking like this. I put Reggie in my mouth and suck the love gravy out of him. My stomach does a few flips. I swallow and hot mm. acid roars up my throat. All right, as good as new. Now you see that chick sitting on the bench over there looking at her phone? Yeah, I say. She's wearing a business suit and is a no doubt on her way to work. I want you to put me on and ask her for a... Wouldn't it be better if I put the condom on when she agrees? Nope. You need to be prepared. She never know what I was talking about. And you're going to ruin the mood fumbling around trying to get me on. Good point. I pull my cock out. What the fuck? Is that all there is? And why is it bleeding? Don't ask. And what do you mean? It's six inches uncut. That's above the national average by half an inch. The girthwise, dude, looks like a pencil. I can't help that. It's all I've got. I'm just going to imagine Marjorie, the hot milk from my local supermarket. She always leans forward lots when she's packing my groceries, giving me an eyeful of a cleavage. I'm hard in seconds. I slip Reggie over my... I know. Your cock looks like a five-year-old wearing his father's tuxedo. Now get over there and ask for a... I waddle over the bench and I can now have jutting out of my pants like a diving board. Um, excuse me, miss. Would you like me to... Yes, I'm all ready for it. The woman looks up from her phone, stares directly at my cock and screams. A couple of guys playing frisbee nearby look over at me. Hey, what are you doing? One of them yells. I freak out and bolt for it. Hey man, slow down. I'm gonna fall. I can't hang on. Reggie calls out. I look down. Pilots and Oxnock and poor Reggie's holding on for dear life. It's safe to stop. The two guys have strolled over to chat up the businesswoman. That was a pathetic display, Matt. I can see hanging out with you and your pencil deck will never get me laid. Just hang me on that branch, will you? Maybe some teenager will get caught out and leave me. I feel bad for Reggie. He's got a dream and he's struggling to make it come true. How about I put you in my wallet and we'll see if anything comes up. Reggie's quiet for a moment, mulling it over. I guess. I don't have any choice, do I? Not really. Bottom in half and stone inside my wallet. I cut through the trees and head back to the road and to the chemist. The chemist is busy. They tell me my meds won't be ready for 30 minutes, so I decide to do a little shopping while I wait. A flat steak sure would be nice for lunch, so I head to the Red Apron, my local butcher. 
The shop is empty, but I can hear Craig, the butcher, out the back with the bone saw. Shalom. A voice comes from behind the counter. Craig must have hired a new staff member. Shalom, I reply. What can I do for you? I look longingly at all the cuts of expensive meat in the display case, porthouse, tenderloin, and ribeye. My mouth waters. I could sure go for ribeye steak instead of a nasty old flapper right about now. Fuck it. I'll worry about the budget tomorrow. I'll have that magnificent marble bastard there, thanks, I say, pointing. Great choice, the voice replies. I wait a couple of minutes in silence. Um, are you going to fetch it for me? Love to, but I can't. I'm the meat cleaver. You have to wait for the butcher. Oh. I see the cleaver lying on the chopping block, calm jawed around him. How's that working out for you? It sucks. I see all the other knives on my friend here, the felting knife. Doing all the dainty work. There's me hacking and slashing like Michael Myers on Halloween. Oh man, that really does suck. Nothing's worse than being stereotyped into a job you don't want to do. Tell me about it. You know what I really want to do though? What? I'm not really listening. All I can think about is getting that steak home and frying it up with some garlic butter. Be a model. A what? Where the fuck's the butcher? I want my steak. It's a Jew trained the practice of Brett Muller, the covenant of circumcision. Those guys have it all. Respect from the community. Maybe not the kids whose cops don't butcher him, though. And the blessing of Yahweh, our God. He sighs. That'll be the life. You're Jewish? You don't look Jewish. I say, squinting across the room. Name is Rob, baby. 100% Jim Steele. How about that? Well, best of luck to you. Pursue your dreams. They may very well come true. What the fuck's Craig doing? Butchering the cow as well? You're right, man. I should pursue my dreams. Have you still got your foreskin for chance? That's a hell of a personal question for a shop worker to ask a customer. Craig never crosses professional boundaries like that, but I guess it's okay, considering your interests and dicks and stuff. The answer is yes. I regret what I say next, the second it comes out of my mouth. Though, if I'm honest with myself, I've always wanted one of those cuts like Randy Spears. Instead, I've got the last chook in the shop lock. Fuck, what have I done? Today's your lucky day. You're going to be my first customer. You know, on second thoughts... Please be a mate. I can redo a practice. All right, but you better know what you're doing. Okay, let's get started full Craig returns. Come back behind the counter and put your pot in the chopping block. We'll take off that dunce head of yours in no time. The name's Eliza. You can call me Izzy. Matt, I stomp around behind the counter, hoping Craig will come out. But he's still sawing some cow in half. I pull out my pot. It's understandably shriveled up the size of my little pinky. Okay, lay on the block and stretch it out as much as you can. Then grab me the other hand and lop that hand off. I lay Thor as I so named him on the bloody chopping block. I can't believe this is happening to me. I wander to a butcher shop looking for a steak, end up getting a backroom circumcision. I drag in a deep breath. All right, I'm ready. Close your eyes, best you don't see this. You sure? You won't miss? I'm trembling slightly. I hope that doesn't affect Izzy's aim. I'm professional, you're in safe hands. Izzy thumps down on the butcher's block. My eyes spring open, desperately searching for the result. Tiff my box red, and my fingers are gripping a piece of skin shaped like a small onion ring. Damn, not enough. One more time. I raise Izzy above my head and grip my bloody cock. Thor's been beheaded. The baby mushroom-sized centre of my universe just lies there. Blood jets out of my shaft and sprays all over the sacrificial surface and stainless steel workbench. Oops, a bit too much. It's crooked too. Yeah, let me even it up. The cleaver shoots up above my head and thuds down. Another inch is trimmed off my pencil. What the fuck do I do? I yell, holding my stump as it spurts bright red blood and white arcs. Grab a piece of string and tie it around the end. It'll cut off the blood supply and you'll be fine. Not a bad first attempt, though. What do you reckon? What? You're fucking kidding me. You chopped off half my dick. I snatch up a piece of the butcher's string and wind it tightly around the base of my beloved Thor. The blood flow and the searing pain immediately stop. That's gratitude for you. Anyway, doesn't matter. Think about getting other business. Too many troublesome customers. Look, I'm sorry. I'm just a bit upset because I lost my knob. We were kind of attached. I stuff my mutilated member back in my blood splattered pants. That's all right. You can make it up to me by assisting me in my next venture. What would that be? Please don't say proctologist. I caught that movie Halloween last night, and I was thinking about how much fun killing innocent people look. I sigh. Why can't I say no to these losers? All right, let's do it. How about we start with Craig first? I hate how that fucker over sharpens me. I'm not so keen. Craig's a nice guy, an army vet with three kids and a wife. I'd much rather butcher someone I don't know. Easy senses my hesitation. You'll enjoy it, I promise. Nothing beats the feeling of hacking into living bone tissue. I cut the tip of Craig's thumb off once. Oh my god, what a buzz. That little clink as they broke through the bone made me so hard. I wander through the back of the shop. Craig's got his back to me. The jigsaw-like blade makes quick work of a cow femur. I creep up behind him with the cleaver raised. 
Remember, we want him alive so we can have some fun. As he hisses, I bring the blade down his lower bicep. Craig Shaw has honed the edge. A bites through bone and meat as of a warm butter. Craig has a what the fuck moment as he stared at his severed limb pumping out his arterial blood. His eyes dance about in shock. I duck around him and sever the other arm. Oh fuck yes, outstanding. As he howls. He whirls around like a sprinkler, spraying me with blood. The legs, dude, the legs. Take them both off so we can get them up on the jigsaw and saw them in half. I lunge at Craig's right leg as he bites halfway into his calf. Fuck! Craig screams, crashing to the ground with his mangled leg wavering in the air. I grab the foot and slash through the rest of the leg, amputating with two more deft swings. I heft up the cleaver again, and Craig's leg bone cracks loudly as I thud Izzy down deep into his other thigh. A couple more blows and a hack through the muscles and tendons. Warm, copper-smelling blood spills from the frayed stump. Here, help me pick him up and chop him in half with a bone saw. As he says, Craig redoubles his effort to resist, waving his squirty stubs around and hollering deliriously. I grab him under the shoulder. He thrashes around and tries to gnaw my hand. But he can't reach. I push him towards the whirling blade, crotch first. The saw separates his oh, and his wall right in the middle and chomps into his anus. The sour stench of feces and urine hits my nostrils. Bone chips sting my face as the saw whirs up Craig's spine. Organs no longer contained in their bony chamber spill out and slither onto the floor into an ankle deep and slimy offal. Craig's screams continue until his voice box is severed. The blade then chops his lolling tongue in half and splits his hair scar. A heavy eyelid blinks over his bulging eye, and I wink back before flicking the off switch on the saw and wiping the blobs of pink curd from my face. It's quiet. Craig's anguished bellows have been replaced by the throaty gurgle of draining body fluids. Oh man, how cool was that? You come straight down the center. What a pro. You just can't compare it to lopping off lopsided foreskins. As he says breathlessly. I'm trembling from the adrenaline overdose. Where to next? How about the cafe across the road? It's full of middle-aged women wearing $500 yoga pants and yapping about how vagina steaming has changed their lives. Why don't we have a Cleveland got his Botox bitches' faces? I wipe the worst of the blood off me with some paper towels, stuff Izzy into my pants and stride out into the street. A small dog being dragged along by an old lady sniffs my leg, obviously attracted to the smell of blood. Who's a cute doggy then? I say bending down to give him a scratch under the chin. He's a little Yorkshire Terrier with a blue bow in his hair. Don't hassle the nice man, Dorian, the old woman says. The little old lady gives Dorian a tug, continues to shuffle down the street. You know, watching my and the for their bucks would be really cool. But, but I love doggies. I've never heard an animal in my life, except for my cat. Who's in charge here? Me. Now do it. I catch up to the dog, and with one swing I... and uh, there I... He doesn't even whimper. Oblivious, the old lady drags him along on his leash and leaves behind his twitching hind legs and a trail of organs to steam on the hot December pavement. All right, let's do it. Let's fuck up those bitches. After all the exertion of the morning, I'm feeling parched. Let me grab a cold drink from the vending machine across the street first. As I cross, I hear a scream. The little old lady just found out Dorian is only half the dog he used to be. I open my wallet to purchase a large bottle of Mountain Dew. Reggie raises his head. Hey dude, how's it hanging? Have you got some pussy lined up for me yet? With all the bloodshed, I've forgotten about Reggie. Izzy, meet Reggie, a condon I saved from a life in the gutter. Reggie, meet Izzy, a meat cleaver and wannabe serial killer. Whoa, what happened to your cock? Reggie says, staring at the massive blood stain at the front of my pants. Izzy, cut my knob off. That's great. How am I supposed to get laid now? I shrug. There's a long silence. See that guy striding towards us? He looks like he gets a lot of pussy, Reggie says. I glance up to see a young guy sipping a monster energy drink and surfing his phone. Oh, I ain't much going to tell him to years off in the front. I'll chop him up with Izzy. Reggie says. Why don't we hack him to death? And oh, the rest of the mission is up. Izzy says. It's not a plan, but let's make that plan B, because most chicks prefer their cocks attached to their owners, I say. The young guy draws near. Hey, brother, how's it hanging? He scowls at me. I get in his way. I was wondering if I could put this condom on you. I wave Reggie in his face. And then if you could f*** years off in the Get away from me, creep. He shoves me hard, making me stagger back. Plan B. Izzy roars. One skip and I embed Izzy halfway into the back of his head. The guy hits the ground face first with an awful crack and jerks around like a break dancer. Get his off, off quick. There's a sexy blonde bag coming. Reggie shrieks. I have to put my foot in the middle of the guy's back to rest Izzy free. I flip the dude over. He's frothing in the mouth and his eyes have rolled back in his cracked head. I yank down his pants. It's a beauty. Reggie gasps. It sure is. Seven inches soft and it's spraying pee everywhere. 
I grab it by the tip, piss shoots up my sleeve, and in one whack it's off. I slip Reggie on it. The blonde comes to a halt and eyes me hunched over the body. I hold out the palm of my hand with Reggie lying in it. Rock of it twitches like a dying snake. Ma'am, how'd you like to get this up you? I say. How about it, babe? Reggie says. The woman screams, and despite wearing high heels, she bolts down the street, popping her ankles with each footfall. Chase her, dude. I want to f- yes, or- Reggie says. Ma'am, wait, you forgot your cock. I say, running after and waving Reggie and Izzy above my head. Everyone on the street is watching now. People have crowded out of the shops to stare at the commotion. I run past the little old lady cradling a demi-dog. That's the man who killed my dog, she screams. I smack her in the chops of Reggie as I run past and she goes down. Unable to run on broken ankles anymore, the blonde collapses too, ass in the air, skirt hitched up, and flesh tuck on display. Gee, she must have forgotten to wear her panties. Yeah, just throw me in there, yells Reggie. The man steps out in front of me and levels a gun. Drop the fucking cleaver, he says. Kill him, as he yells. Nah, bury him in that surf, mate, demands Reggie. The blonde screaming, the cops bellowing at me, and I don't want to disappoint either Reggie or Izzy. I try to complete my task, except I'm so flustered and confused I really fuck it up. I hold the cleaver at the blonde's and I can charge at the cop with Reggie. The cleaver thuds into the blonde's ass cheek. The baby-faced cop hesitates. He looks new, and I don't think he wants to shoot me. I smack him on the side of the head with the oh, The muzzle flashes. The first shot hits me in the shoulder and spins me around. The next thuds into my chest and sends me reeling backwards. I hit the ground hard, and the fall knocks the wind out of me. Or maybe the bullet does that. Reggie squirms out of my grip and wriggles across the ground like a worm to the blonde's cup. You know? She's writhing on the pavement, trying to pull Izzy out of her buttock. Frothy blood bubbles out of my mouth. Come on, little guy, you can do it. I choke, and my tongue flops around clumsily in my mouth. I'm trying, I'm trying. Reggie calls back to me. The world starts to dim around the edges. Absolute blackness creeps into the center of my vision. The last thing I see is Reggie inches from his dream. I feel groggy. Memories of my rampage through the streets of Balmoral Shopping Centre crowd my head. Was it all a bad dream? I peer into my pants. My cock looks like an angry red boil, bristling with stitches, and my shoulder and chest have puckered red wounds where I was shot. It seems I've been off the planet for some time. My surroundings are familiar, a seclusion room and a mental health facility. The only furnishings are a plastic mattress, a pillow and a blanket. The door has reinforced glass window. It's a relief, nothing can hurt me here. A woman's face appears behind the glass and the door clicks open. You're back in the land of the living. I'm Claire, your nurse tonight. She puts on a smile, but I see through it. Claire was pretty once, but no doubt working in this place and dealing with freaks like me has sucked the life out of her. Her face is sallow and her eyes look out from dark hollows. I grunt in response. Let me know if you need anything. I'll be checking on you regularly through the shift. Something to eat or drink, perhaps. I shake my head. It's good to have something in your stomach before I bring you your medication, Matt. I want my meds now, I growl. I have no idea when I last had them, but I don't want to hurt myself or anybody else. They're due at six o'clock. You'll be fine until then. She turns to the door, dismissing me. But I'm not safe, I yell after her. I know I'll never be safe again, unless I'm totally drugged out. Everything is fine, Matt. I'll be back at six with your medication. As she opens the door, a pen drops from her pocket and lands on the lino floor. I stare at it mouth agape, as if it's an alien. A pen! You dropped a pen, I shriek. But I'm too late. Nurse Claire shut the door and is walking away. I rush to the door and bang frantically on the glass, but it's no use. I know from experience these rooms are soundproof, and I'm stuck in a cell with a fucking pen. This is going to be a problem. I just know it. I drop to the ground and curl up in a ball. I shut my eyes as tightly as I can, cover my ears with my hands, and rock myself gently back and forth. A faint floral scent lingers in the air. I try to concentrate on the fragrance and croon to myself. Everything is going to be all right, Matt. Just settle down. You'll be fine. It will be if you do everything I say. Pen says. The voices are getting worse. Usually if I block my ears, I can't hear them. But now they echo in my head, and I hum loudly to see if I can drown Pen out. The Pen shouts over my frantic humming. Nurse Claire dropped me for a reason. She wants you to hurt yourself. It'll make you feel better. I scream and increase my rocking speed. Don't forget, if you don't comply, there's the matter of your mother's well-being. I don't know how I got here, but I'm sitting cross-legged staring down at Pen. There, we're friends now. This isn't so bad, is it? I shake my head. Now squeeze me in behind your eye and flick your eyeball out. I don't hesitate. What's the point? I sink the pen at the corner of my eye near the bridge of my nose, and then with a jerk, I flick out my eye. It dangles by the optic nerve and bumps warm and wet against my cheek. Watery pink fluid works its way down to my lips. And the other one, Pen says. I jab into the corner of my right eye and crank out the orb. The two eyeballs swing from my empty sockets. 
Ah, brilliant. You look stark raving mad. Now shake your head wildly about. I thrash my head around. My wet eyeballs bounce off my face like those Japanese pallet drums on the Karate Kid 2. You know, those drums suspended on a rod that have two heads. Please, can I put them back in? I don't want to lose my sight. After you do one more thing for me, I want to see what your digestive system looks like. For scientific purposes. See? I've got this little light on my tip. Oops, sorry. Silly me. I'll just hold it down by your eyes so you can see it. You, you want me to pull my guts out? As if gorging my eyes out wasn't bad enough. Either that, you can swallow me. I choose the swallow option. It's the much gentler of the two. If I can't ship Pen out, the doctors can do keyhole surgery to remove him. That would definitely be preferable to disembowelment. I tilt my head back and open my throat like Linda Lovelace in Deep Throat. If she could swallow Harry Reem's eight inch long, then I'm sure I can swallow a mere pen. I drop Pen down my open throat. It constricts as my gag reflex kicks in and Pen wedges in my throat. I try to swallow him, but he won't budge. I panic and throw myself at the door, beating against the glass. My screams try to work their way through my clogged throat. I force my fingers into my mouth to grab Pen, but he's just out of reach. The pressure on my head makes it feel as if I'm about to explode. My legs wobble and I sink to my knees, still trying desperately to dislodge the pen. My hand is down my throat, almost up to my wrist, when I hear the door slam open, and someone runs into the room. It smells like Nurse Claire. She tugs at my arm and tries to pull my hand from my throat. My stretched out fingers are so close I'm almost touching pen, and I try to fight her off. He's trying to choke himself, she shouts, and I hear her press the pager on her hip, calling a code blue. Within 30 seconds, I'm surrounded by a blur of nurses, doctors and security guards. They must think I'm a real fright with my eyeballs dangling on my cheeks and half my arm jamming down my throat. Strong hands grab my arm and pull my fist out. I want to tell them I've got a pen in my throat, but I can't talk. Hey Matt, it's really cool down here. Why don't you swallow an eyeball and check it out for yourself? Want to make sure you never miss a Chilling Tales for Dark Nights video again? Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications.